Hello everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life. It is mail call time all the way from Australia. Yes, once again, the man, Angelo Panayotu of Real Orbit has reached out to me. And in this, you guys already read the video title. It is the pressure bar. Now, I know a lot of you have been waiting to see a little bit more information about this. So what I have right here is a prototype and I'm so excited. I'm really, really excited about it. So let's just crack this package right open and let's talk about it, okay? Wow! This thing is chunkier than I thought. <laughs> so here it is everyone, this is a prototype of the pressure bar in stainless steel. Now I know that there's a lot of talk about this and a lot of backstory about this, but I will first have to address the fact that I had some design input in this. I don't own the design, I definitely don't have a hand in producing it or manufacturing it, but I did give a suggestion and here's the backstory. Quite some time ago, a man named Nathan Benjamin, and I'm not going to talk so much about him, but he reached out to me alongside Essence 2, and Essence 2 was the 3D modeler of this uh, particular spinner. And he asked me what I thought about it, and I said that I felt that he could add some taper to it. And the tapers that I'm talking about is this particular taper right here. The initial design had these weights just flat, you know, very typical kind of just flat, straight weights. And I said, why don't you put a taper? And Essen did it, and Essen also added a rounding here on the inside, which is just beautiful like see it's curved this way as well and this this right now this feels just so comfortable and after all of that and to cut a story short the person who is responsible for this right now is angelo of real orbit basically some stuff happened nathan just disappeared and so angelo decided to just take charge of everything and i'm gonna just tip my head off to him angelo you are an amazing person this is this is great man to fork out money and to just settle everything and handle everything by yourself from here on out this is crazy so everyone i present to you the pressure bar once again by real orbit out of australia now i'm gonna take off the buttons and let's have a look at the retention and the buttons as well so it is a press fit spinner as you guys can see in this prototype it is a stainless steel r188 bearing but the production version will come with sbv2s and you guys know i really love sbv2 bearings i happen to think that they are some of the best bearings out there for spinners so that's a really really good choice in my opinion now looking at the buttons you guys can see that the buttons are not dedicated male and female buttons these are the same halves that are held in together by a set screw but but the retail version will come with dedicated male and female buttons so that is something that i also have to point out you'll only be seeing this now because this is a prototype and it's easier to manufacture prototypes this way so now that the buttons are off let's look at the frame itself machining looks pretty darn solid everything is nicely rounded and there are chamfers even on the outer edge there you could see the chamfering very well done. Chamfers on the raised weights as well, even on the inside here, around the bearing. So there's, there's no sharpness, really no sharpness. But this thing though, this rounding here, this is amazing. It's a very subtle rounding. And the only other time that I've seen this kind of rounding done on the spinner is the bow tie by United Machining. Shout out to you, Dylan. But this one though, wow, this design, cool. Essen. Good job, man. Good job on this, this touch. This is awesome. And you guys can see the machining marks on the inside there. This adds a little bit of, I guess, a little bit of pizzazz to it. I kind of like it. And there's some kind of a textured finish as well out here on the weights. I believe it should be a machine kind of finish. Maybe some people would call it surface milling, I think. It feels super smooth. Like, you can't really feel it but it does look pretty good. And out here, you could see all the machining marks in all its glory all around. Nothing that you have to worry about. No burrs sticking out, no sharp edges. This is just crazy. So I'm gonna pop the buttons back on and let's give it a first spin. I've been waiting for this. I've been looking forward to this so much. Oh, before that, you know what? I totally forgot about it, but here are the buttons. Have a closer look. They are two steps in. Pretty cool and there's a dimple in the middle. I don't think this dimple is really functional because it's not a very small dimple. This is one of the widest dimples I've seen so far. I don't know why this is done. Could be a design, I guess a design nuance, but I don't think you'd be able to put a pen in there and balance it very well because usually when you want that, you need a very, very small dimple and they do feel comfortable. You know, it's been a while since I really spoke about buttons because, you know, buttons have been always something that is kind of like a given to have a good button design. But this, with all these cuts and steps, they don't feel sharp at all. And there's an angled edge out here as well. So good chamfers on the outside of the buttons. So here we go, first spin. And you guys know it's going to be a preloaded flick. That sound, that sound, that satisfying sound. That high-pitched humming with the whirring sound and very balanced as well. 
Very, very good. Very, very good. This thing is chunky, guys. It's really chunky. It's heavy. This, according to the website, is coming in at about 70 to 80 grams, at least for the prototype. I gotta say, it's it's really surprising. It's really, really surprising. I like it so far. The impressions on this is good. Oh, oh, this is nice. I get a nice feedback here because there's a slight recessing going in here. You guys can see that. A little bit of a waste right there. Not too exaggerated, but good enough for a nice tactile feedback. That's cool, that's cool. Very good, the first impressions are very good so far, everyone. I'm proud to say that. I'm proud to say that, I really am. Now, the next thing I'm going to talk about is whether or not this thing can table spin. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Now, initially, I suggested for raised buttons because the initial buttons were really, really shallow. They were really, really short and they would not allow for table spins. But this one has a chunky button. Everything looks rather proportionate. And the fat of my thumbs, well, it is kind of close, but it's not going to really touch the weight, see? So that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. And now comes the part of the video where things are going to get a little bit juicy. There has been quite a lot of talk about this particular spinner being a clone of sorts of other spinners, in particular, the iFidget. Now, you guys know I have an iFidget. Tell me what do you guys think? Tell me, do you think these two spinners look the same? Because I honestly don't think they look the same. Now, to be fair, I have a mini Asylum, a Thrax Mini, courtesy of Nathan Cobb. You are an awesome man. A Dot 2, and of course, we have the Stubby. Now, none of these look the same. None of them look the same, especially these two. The only thing that looks relatively similar is the inside part of the raised weight. But when you look at it sideways, guys, come on now, tell me. How is this the same? How is this a clone? How is the pressure bar a clone of the iFidget? I cannot understand. It's just haters and just fanboyism. I mean, think about it, okay? Think about it. Now, I'm gonna say it in this video. I don't care if you're gonna dislike me. I don't care if you're gonna throw hate or shade at me for this. But nowadays, whenever someone comes up with a new design, the spinner community is really, really quick to jump at that person's throat saying, you know, it's a copy of this, it looks like that, it's a clone of this, it's a clone of that. In particular, we're talking about the Cocoon Spinner. Now, although I'm not a fan of Kinetics Asia Pacific, they recently came out with a rose spinner. And that's a triangular shaped spinner. And everyone was giving that shit, saying that it is a clone of the Cocoon. And if people can say that this is a clone of this, and if people can say that the rose is a clone of the Cocoon, why is no one saying that the Bi Cocoon is a clone of the Oculus spinner that was released like over a year ago? What in the world is wrong with people nowadays? What in the world is wrong with these fanboys? What in the world is up with the behavior where people just jump at other people's throats just so quickly? What is wrong? You know, this whole hobby and the whole community was supposed to be united. You know, we were supposed to be sharing and having fun and talking about spinners all the time. But no, there's so much hate and so much negativity. This is just stymieing the growth and the progress of the community as well as designs. This is just going to restrict people and discourage people so much to the point that we probably might actually lose out on something really, really good, like a possible amazing innovation. You know? Like what? That is... I don't understand. I don't understand. <sighs> but anyway, anyway, that is enough of that negativity talk in this video. This is the size comparison of the pressure bar against a stubby. And this is how much more chunky it is than the stubby. This is awesome. This is really, really awesome. I, I like this. It is hefty, chunky, and very comfortable so far. The first impressions are really, really good. So big shout out to Angelo for sending this over to me, really. If not for you, this wouldn't have become a reality. After all that has been said and done, man, you did a good job, Angelo. You did a good job. This is now something real, you know, something tangible, all thanks to you. And if you guys are interested in getting a pressure bar for yourself, definitely check out the description box below. I'll put links there. So guys, the pressure bar, it is going for 95 USD. Wait, let me check. Is it USD or AUD? Hold on. I was wrong. 95 Australian dollars. 95 Australian dollars, which is about like, mm, about 90 US. It's available both in stainless steel and in bronze. But here's the catch. It is only going to be made in a small batch for this run, at least. I don't know if there's going to be any future runs, but 
for this batch at least, it's gonna be one out of 20 for the first run of the pressure bar. So it's gonna be serialized everyone, anyone who's interested in purchasing it. And if you get on the first run, it is going to be serialized. This is currently weighing in at about 70 to 80 grams, like I mentioned earlier. And there's one more thing that is listed on the website and that is the fact that this would take up to 23 millimeter wide buttons. And so I have a treat for you guys. Cupola V2 buttons by Unquiet Hands. And these buttons are sent in to me courtesy of Tom Lynette of Unquiet Hands. Thank you, Tom. These are for the press fit version. He also sent me a set that is spec'd out for the screw cap bearing retention system, but these are the press fit ones and I'm gonna put it right here and you guys can see that it fits in beautifully. Look at that, just look at that. Oh. <laughs> wow, wow. This is nice. See, it is wider than these buttons here. Got the original buttons back on. And just before I end the video, guys, I wanted to bring the inertia spinner back in and let you guys know that you see this color over here? Well, okay, well, I just gotta admit that this is just flamed stainless steel. But the reason why I have the inertia spinner back here in frame in this video is because I wanna share more information about the inertia spinner as well. Since I'm talking about real orbit, I might as well let you guys know that right now the inertia is more like a build it yourself inertia. And you even have the option of just getting the frame or just getting the weights or just getting the button. I wanted to share that piece of information to you guys because the inertia spinner is a really, really nice spinner. In case you guys don't know, it's one of these smooth spinners out there in the market oh yeah so look at the dimple see the dimple on the inertia button is a lot smaller than the dimple featured on the pressure bar button and that's about it everyone thank you so much for sharing in this slice of my life and watching this video all the way throughout i hope that i provided enough information to help you decide whether or not the pressure bar is a spinner for you i'm really surprised and very very pleased with the way this thing turned out once again a good job to angelo good job to essence too real orbit Keep up the good work. Thank you for sending this over to me as always. It is a huge honor. I really appreciate all the support that you guys have shown my channel. All of you viewers who are always supporting this channel anyway, without you guys, there wouldn't be anything to show. Once again, thank you everyone. Links in the description box down below. And I'll catch all of you in the next slice of my life. Gaga, boo. Since you guys know my first impressions, I decided why not let's add more to this particular video and ask Tetris for his first impressions. Bro, I got a new spinner that was just like released mm -hmm. for pre-order, but I have a prototype. I just received it yesterday. So here it is. Oh, so cute. It's called the pressure bar. Why do? I don't know why it's called the pressure bar, but uh, your first impressions. You don't usually see angle weights or stuff. I, I'm the one that requested for the angle weights. Not really requested, I'm the one that suggested it and then they decided to choose it. Yeah. But nice to rest a finger on top yeah the reason why that is the case is because the designer he decided to make the weights curved if you look carefully the weights are slightly curved oh yeah it is uh, very comfortable to put your finger there something new that i see nice and not bad different for me because I put my finger very far out. Mm. But so you hit you hit the corner basically? Yeah, I hit the corner. Not, not like that. Because I can't really do a nice spin with my finger is just inside. I mean, I'm not even used to it. But if I put it outside more, it's comfortable. Dude, I'm going to ask you a question. Look at this spinner. Uh -huh. Does it look anything like that? No. <laughs> far from here. Uh far from it so i'm just gonna add that if anyone sees the eye fidget and then looks at the pressure bar and says that it is a clone i think that person ought to be slapped like how do you i'm just gonna leave my comment at that yeah i can table spin but very very close yeah paper difficult right yeah paper cannot spin but nice at least they Put this angle thing here at the edges as well, so it's not so sharp. Mm. I spin it. I spin though. I figured off camera that you can only table spin on a solid surface. Like if you use like fabric or like a cloth surface or like even just a stack of paper, then it's gonna be a little bit difficult for you to table spin it because it's just that that much off the table. That's all. 
So what do you think overall? First impressions only. First impressions. Because huh? this is literally the first day that I have it on my EDC anyway, so this is just first impressions. It's a unique design huh? because of the angle. Which, uh, never seen this before. So something fresh considering that this hobby is the hype is down already. Yeah. So good job to real orbit. First impressions are uh, good so far. So far, gotta be fair and have it on me for a few days before I really am able to get the, the full experience of it. Because right now it's still like, you know, like everyone when you get a new spinner, it is the honeymoon period. So I thought it's a nice way to end this, this slice of my life. My left hand is with